Hi, it's me and Laura, and today I'm going to be doing a video on like college advice or how I got into Howard or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, so basically I'm just going to be giving tips and stuff and talking about some stuff that I wish I could have done better. So maybe if you're watching this and you're about to apply or you're about to take your SAT or you're just like ninth grade, just starting high school and you want to make sure you're ready for college, just so you know what to work on. Anything you could do, I could do better. I can do any, I can, I can do any, I can, I can do anything better than you. You know, better than you, better, better uh, than you. You know, better than you, better, better than you. Okay, so these are the timestamps. If you just want to skip through the video, I think I'll also put them in the description. But timestamps. Okay. Okay, so in total, I applied to about 11 schools. I applied to Howard, and I got accepted. I applied to Bowie, and I got accepted. Hampton, I got accepted. Longwood, I got accepted. Virginia State, I got accepted. Um, North Carolina a and I got accepted. I applied to VCU, and I got accepted. I also applied to Fordham, that's in like New York, I got accepted, and then I applied to UVA and Michigan. Um, for UVA and Michigan, I did. Um, well, Michigan, I got denied. UVA, I got put, in, put on the waiting list. And for Norfolk State, I got accepted. I feel like that is all I applied to. So in total, that's a few colleges. Um, but if you already know where you want to go, you don't have to apply to that many. I knew I wanted to go to Howard, but I also wanted to have a big range of choices just in case I did not get into Howard. Um, so let's start with um, let's start with my GPA in school. So basically, my GPA was a is a three point six three unweighted, and the weighted is a four point two two. I think for most of my early action, I put my unweighted because I felt like that was safer and I wasn't able to meet with my guidance counselor who later told me I should put my weight in. Um, but yeah, so make sure when you're doing your application, if you can put weighted, put your weighted grade because obviously it's higher. Um, and yeah, so make sure you're just focusing on your grades. I feel like when I was watching these videos when I was applying to colleges and like, you know, trying to see what other people had, a lot of them have like all A's, straight A's, blah, 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 but for a lot of schools, you don't have to be a perfect student. Obviously, if you're trying to apply to an Ivy, you got to have them type of grades, but for a lot of other schools, it's more about like who you are as a person, and you also have to remember that when you are applying, you're not going to be the only one who has good grades or bad grades. There's going to be a lot of different people, and the main way they're going to filter out people is through the essay and short answers and stuff like that. So you should keep up with your schoolwork, but don't stress too much about it. Depending on which college you want to go to, make sure you're at least at the average or a little bit closer to the average. If you're not at the average, you can still make up for it in other categories like your clubs and stuff like that. So for the SAT, it was um, the SAT. Let me tell you. I forgot which day I took was supposed to take my SAT. That's bad. So I didn't remember until the day before. So I did absolutely no studying. And then on top of that, I had no, because our school doesn't pay for them. I know a lot of people's schools, or at least my friends' schools, they pay for their SATs. And SATs are expensive. So I only took it once, and I also hadn't taken or done any math in an entire year. So that was like all my downfalls. I got a 1240, which isn't bad at all, but it's also not like, you know, I know a lot of people that were in the group chat to have like 1400s and 1500s and um but also i do recommend you taking the sat as many times as possible because the higher sat scores or your act scores and your gpa and stuff like that the more money you'll get in financial aid and so that'll definitely help you i got a 1240 and i'm i was okay with that um i also didn't know you could do the um combining scores, whatever that's called. I didn't know you could do that until it was too late to take it again. So it was just whatever and I was happy with it. Next up, the essays. So 
The essay, I feel like, is like a really, really important part of the application process. A little bit more important than the scores. I mean, the scores are really important, but also like when I was looking at the um, the chart with like the scores that got into the colleges, there was a lot on the lower end, and I feel like it's because of the essays. Like you can have really good grades and stuff, but if you are like a brick wall type person, nobody's gonna admit you. I'm sorry. So for the essays. Um, you need to, I spent like an entire month on my Howard essay. I didn't really spend much time on my other essays. And for the colleges that you're applying to, if it says optional for the essay, it's not optional. Do not just skip it, like don't do that. I wrote all my essays and it took, it takes a long time, but if you really want to go to these schools, you need to do the work and do your best. Um, so I had to write about like an experience or something like that and then I also for the business because I'm studying business next year I had to write an essay about like why I'm interested in business and um, so basically for my um, essay I wrote how I volunteer and coach dance and how that's affected me and how I'm able to affect my community. Um, so make sure you write something that you're passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about what you're writing about, it's going to show through your words and through your essay. So make sure it's something you're passionate about and don't be cliche. So I understand, like just write something, like write about how something affected you or changed you as a person. So say if you don't have the best grades, write like there might be a reason why. If there's a reason why, write about why and write about how you're getting better or you've changed into a better person or just any hardships you've experienced. Make sure it's not something simple like, we won a sports game, or I encouraged my teammates. Yeah, just don't write about like sports games and stuff like, like simple stuff like that. Make sure it's something you're really passionate about. Even if you're passionate about sports, make sure it's something a little bit deeper than that because that's a lot of, like a lot of people write about that. That's just some tips my English teacher gave us. And another thing is that might help is to show, not tell. Um, and that basically means like, Make it a story, make it interesting. And a lot of prompts also, you might think of something that's outside of the box or that might be risky. And I, honestly, I feel like you should take those risks. Because when I did like workshops and stuff for writing the college essays, a lot of them, like a lot of the response, uh, a lot of the responses they highlighted were ones that were like risky or like, you know, like sarcastic or like just like interesting. Make sure you spend a lot of time on your essays and you make sure it's grammatically correct and it's just amazing because it's really important to the process like honestly because if you have somebody who has the same exact grades and SAT scores as you the only way you're going to separate yourself and make sure yourself better or make yourself seem better on paper is by your essay and explaining how you as a person are interesting. And get a teacher to review it or a friend or anybody you trust who is good at English. Make sure they review it and make sure they're honest. I think that's all about essays. If you want to read my essays, you can like comment your email or something. Or I don't know, message me on Instagram or something. And I'll just send you my essay if you really want to read that. But um, yeah. Next up, make sure you keep a, like a list of awards and things you've received throughout your four years in high school. Um, I didn't do that and I feel like I missed a lot of things, but stuff like your honors, like if you've received honors for any semester or like any award you've received in high school, you can put on the list when it asks you. So make sure you keep track of those things and you write them down. I recommend making a spreadsheet or something like that because it just makes it easier because you're going to need like the year you received it, who you received it from and like what award it was and like a description of the award and if you forget about it it's not gonna help you much for your activities list make sure you're as thorough as possible when you're describing uh do you hear that uh anyways make sure you're as thorough as possible when you're describing your activities and the time you spent and the grades and all that because it asks you in like the format of like the activity what grades you did it in how many hours per week and how many weeks per year and if you had a leadership role write that um, I'm gonna list off the things I did in high school and like the time so I am part of a dance team but that's community type thing it's not like a high school dance team I did 
that all four years and before that even, so I spent a lot of time doing that. And then for the past two years, I've been coaching that dance team. So, yeah. I also, this year, we started a Black Student Union, and I did that. And I was the head of the event planning committee, even though it got cut short. But yeah. Third, I was part of um, Sign Language Club, Young Women's Leadership Program. I did babysitting. I put that on. I did theater slash drama. I did a play. Um, I was part of art club for last year. I did gymnastics when I was in 10th and 11th grade. And there was more than this, I think, but I cut the list short because for some schools or scholarships and stuff, you can only have a certain amount of activities listed. But make sure you join a lot of clubs and do a lot of activities during your four years in high school. Get involved. Not only is it good for college, but it's just fun. You, you meet a lot of new people and you get to make friends and that's just good for your mental health. Um, my main thing is make sure you try to get a leadership position in at least one of them. If you can't, I don't think it's the end of the world, but a lot of colleges like to see leadership things like for example, I didn't get any scholarships for, I don't think I, I got the, for Howard I got a lot in scholarships for a leadership scholarship, so just things like that um, can set you aside, uh, but make sure you're doing something you're passionate about, don't just join clubs and stuff just so you can put it on your college application, because that's draining and I feel like that's a waste of time, even though it might look good, it's still a waste of time. Um, and actually participate in the clubs. Don't just join them for college, like I just said. Um, but yeah, try to get a leadership position and one you're passionate about and do good as a leader. <laughs> but yeah, leadership positions are important, but if you're not in a leadership position, try to at least join a club. So for acceptances, Howard like was super duper late. So I did early action and they said that the the email or the acceptance letter would be in by midnight that night and it didn't end up coming like it just it said it would come during the day and like we had from the beginning of the day till midnight and it didn't end up coming until like three or four o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the morning so i stayed up all day waiting for that acceptance letter and when i got it i started bawling because i am so excited but yeah they they're not going to be on time with your acceptance letter, which sucks. Okay, I think I covered everything about like Howard and my stats and stuff, but let's do a quick recap. So SAT 1240, 3.63 GPA, and 4.22 um, weighted. Um, essay, be passionate, spend a lot of time on it, um, get somebody to revise it and make sure your grammar is good, show don't tell. Clubs and organizations, join, become a leader if you want to, <laughs> and have fun. Okay, money. That's a big part of like going to college and choosing which college you wanna go to. Um, I personally think that you should go where you're going to feel at home, and I think that if you really want something, then you'll get it if you work hard enough. With that being said, you should also take in your financial situation if you cannot afford to go to a college and it's going to, like, for the rest of your life, it's gonna kick you in the butt. I don't think it's a good choice. And make sure you're also going to college to do something you love, but that's a that's something for a different. I've had a lot of people at my school who, when I've been doing scholarships, because I've done like 40 at this point, and a lot of them want the money, but they don't want to do the work. And so you have to put in work to get results. You don't expect the money to just come to you. You have to actually work for it, even if you're getting like merit-based aid or need-based aid. No matter what, you're working for it because you have to get into college in the first place. But for scholarships, I have a spreadsheet of scholarships that I use and I'll 
link that in the description below and you guys can use that and if you have any questions you can ask me but I'll update it all the time because I use that but I'll also leave a link to a lot of good scholarship websites and places and tips for scholarships is make sure you're answering the prompt when you answer the question um, right spend your time and do your local scholarships first and make sure you do the harder scholarships because if it's hard that means less people are going to do it and it's free money thank you so much for watching if you want another video on this or if you have any questions please leave them below you can also follow all my social media in the description and also follow me on tiktok because Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or if you want another video like this or like one more that goes more in depth in the different categories, you can comment that below. Um, for the, all the links and stuff, you can check in the description. And that's all. Thanks for watching. Y'all can say whatever you want about BuzzFeed, but them quizzes be hitting, especially when you're bored.